Okay, before I start today's video, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So what we're looking at today is modern hardware and potentially how to build a brand new Commodore 64 in 2024. Uh, so no longer do we actually need to go on eBay and buy terrible condition Commodore 64's yellowed up missing keys that type of thing so I'm going to show you where you can actually buy modern hardware keyboards cases chips multi SD readers everything so this is a collective effort of my research uh, into my personal interest of C64 so first of all we're going to start off with C64 Reloaded, so I'm going to leave all the links in my description so you can visit these websites yourself. So the C64 Reloaded Mark II, as you can see just here, is literally a reimagining of the Commodore board itself. And what this is going to do is sit inside of a C64 case and you're just going to literally put in your own chips. And as you can see just there where my cursor is, it's got little levers, so rather than having your chips soldered onto to the board itself you can actually lever them in and out it does actually say on this website and i've actually ordered from individual computers in the past very trusted website it does give you information on what it is you need to add uh, so for example cpu you can either add a 6 by 10 or 8 500 uh, you're also going to need two pieces of cia chips a video chip as well that's the vic chip and uh, one or two sound chips so if you fancy having best of both worlds with sid then you can actually use both sid chips in this obviously you only be using one at a time but uh this one's actually priced at 210 euros so it's very expensive uh next up we have got the ultima 64 now this is one I've actually been interested in. Uh, so the original Mark 1 model is out of stock at the moment. I'm not sure if uh, the team are actually going to remanufacture the Mark 1, but at the moment they're actually taking in pre-orders for Ultimate 64 Elite Mark 2. Now I've done my own research for this out of my own interest because I really wanted one of these. And this one is so cool, it's actually got built-in Wi-Fi by the seams of it. So, everything's ready to go on this board. All you need to do is put your SID chips in. But other than that, by the seams of it, uh, like I said, my own research, it's all ready to go. Uh, so, you've got all your chips built into the motherboard. It's got a couple of 9-pin ports just there for joysticks. It's got an expansion port, uh, HDMI. So, yeah, it's a modern board and probably the best around at this point. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave the link in my description for this one as well. Uh, now, this one, actually priced at 259 euros uh, Gideon or Gideon's Logic is actually a very trusted website and customers of the previous model the Mark 1 of the Ultimate 64 seem to be very happy at the time when it released I remember that really well uh, next up we have got the Evo 64 I don't actually know much about this one, but judging from the images, you do have to put your own chips inside. So a CIA chip, PLA, SID chips, everything else. Very expensive, but apparently very robust and very, very quality built. Like I said, I can't really say too much about the Evo 64, but there is videos on YouTube and it does look like a cracking piece of kit. Got various different options here in terms of the Evo 64 board itself. For example, we got a blue model just here of the board. Uh, we got standard black and green PCBs, so always looking good on Evo 64. Next up, if you fancy actually building a C64 literally from scratch, we've got this one just here. And what you're going to be doing with this one is literally soldering everything into place. As you can see, this is literally a bare PCB. So for people out there who's interested in soldering, you will require a lot for this board. Next up, we got the 60 clones. So as it says, Commodore 64 replica PCBs. Now, if we scroll down on this just a touch, as we can see, we got a range of three different colors, red, blue, and a black. It looks pretty smart, uh, $35, so I'm taking it. Uh, this is an American manufacturer. And we got options just here, which models to go for. We can even order capacitors to go with this one, as well as metal film resistor packs. Another one I've been looking at recently is the ICS64S. This one's 59.95. 
And if we just scroll down just a little touch, uh, recommended for ICS 64S, uh, we can actually add different things with this if you was to buy the board itself. So connector, header kit, header kit. Uh, you can actually take a look around on this website bit more closer up so it looks a very nice board but again just like the previous couple of options there is out there for building your own c64 uh, you will need to solder everything onto this board itself so next up we've got ourselves a motherboard potentially so how about a case so the first website i'm going to show you is plexilaser.d uh, as you can see just here this website actually manufactures or produces various different transparent cases. Uh, one of the cases they do is the C64 as well as the Ultima U64. Now let me tell you the differences between these two. If we go back to the Ultima 64 website, uh, just a minute ago, well, I was just explaining the differences between these two motherboards just here. So we got two of these models. We got the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. Now, unfortunately for myself, I do prefer the smaller version of this. But the smaller version, the Ultima U64 case, only fits the Mark 1. And like I was saying just a minute ago, I'm not actually sure if the Mark 1 model of the Ultima 64 Elite is actually going to be remanufactured again. So what we're left with then, if you can't get hold of one of those, is a C64 case. If we just go on to this one, as we can see, this is a really nice transparent case. And what this is going to set is a range of different motherboards. Now on Commodore 64 motherboards, there's a little code. If we just scroll down on the website, it's going to say this case is precisely designed and tested for these C64 boards. Uh, so ASSY, and it'll give you a few different codes. And it also says it's going to fit the Ultima 64 and the Ultima 64 Elite. So on Commodore 64 motherboards, around roughly the center of the motherboard in, in the bottom center, there's actually a code. And if you happen to have one of these models of motherboards, then it's going to fit this case just here. And as we can see just here, we can actually get this manufactured in smoke grey tinted for an extra 16 euros. And I'm not a big fan of that colour. This is actually what I'm planning on buying eventually, maybe when my birthday comes around. Now we've also got ventilation slots. If we put text ventilation slots, as you can see just here, we've got some text. So if you want to buy this one for 75 euros with the ventilation slot text, you can type up to around 15 letters, I think, and yeah, that's going to look pretty cool. Add some LED lights underneath it, and that's going to look pretty smart. Now, a lot of you is probably aware, but several years ago, the original factory molds for the Commodore 64 C cases was found, and there was a Kickstarter campaign. I actually bought a transparent case at that time. Now, over time, different people received ownership of this, and this is one website who's actually selling these. So if we scroll down, we've actually got different colors of the 64C board. We've got the transparent, we've got the bread bin gray color, we got a black color, and they've even got an SX64 color just here, which is this one just here. So uh, the SS64, if you're not aware, uh, apparently that was the world's first ever Commodore 64 portable computer. I actually owned one of those, and uh, my son loved playing on that. Okay, and finally, we have got the BMC64. So if you're unfamiliar with BMC64, this is bare metal Commodore 64. This is software, and as it says just here, this is uh, optimized for Raspberry Pi 3. It also works uh, with Raspberry Pi 2 in zero models. So obviously, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 3, it's going to work better. I've briefly looked into this, and I do believe it also supports Raspberry Pi 3B models too. This is actually Vice M by the seams of it. I've never used one of these. Uh, it's not going to work with Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 or Model 400 if you happen to have one. I have looked into this. Apparently this boots up within seconds, a few seconds I think. If you don't fancy doing that yourself you can actually nip over to eBay and there's sellers on eBay which actually sells these setups. Now you're gonna see lots of serial cables just here. What this is is how to connect a Raspberry Pi to use BMC64 inside of a real Commodore 64 case. Now, personally, I don't like the idea of ripping a Commodore 64 case apart, so I'm quite against that, but if that's your thing, then that's an option to have. 
So just here we can see BMC64 C64 board. What this is going to do at top just here is just allow you to connect the Raspberry Pi and everything else inside of a Commodore 64 case. We've also got one just here with a little cute keyboard on it. So that's another option and that's a very quick way to Commodore 64 game in 2024. Briefly, if you can afford one of these, this is the Mega 65. So obviously this is based on the Commodore 65, which was supposed to come after the Commodore 64, but Commodore went bankrupt. And at the time of manufacturing or even thinking about producing another 8-bit computer, we was well into the 16-bit, if not 32-bit era. So that idea by Commodore was scrapped, but we did get a few prototypes in the Mega 65 is based on those prototypes. So it's a very cool looking system. As we can see, we got HDMI, we got VGA, we got Ethernet, and other different ports on there. These are extremely expensive if you can actually get hold of one. If you do happen to look on eBay for one, I've seen them in the past selling for around 1,500 to 2,000. Okay, so so far we've looked at new motherboards and we've also taken a look at a few different cases or a couple of cases. So what we're going to do next is look at some more fun stuff. What we're going to do is head over to the Future Was 8-Bit website. Just here we can find a multi-purpose cartridge. The first one they've got for sale is a SD2 IEC. What this does is connects into the back of your Commodore 64 data set or cassette port as well as the serial port. You then load up software and firmware and games onto a SD card and you pop it inside of the device. And you pretty much type in commands on your C64 and you can list your games and applications. And they're very smart. Now, personally, I owned a SD2 IEC many, many years ago and I wasn't too impressed. But times have changed and things have come on a long way. This particular one comes with a 1541 case. So it looks a lot like the first Mark 1 model, I suppose, of the original Commodore floppy drive. Very cute. But not all of these come like this. You might find some SD2 IEC is a bare PCB. Okay, next up we got Turbo Chameleon version 2. The first thing you're going to notice is the very expensive price, 235 euros. Yes, it's very expensive, but from personal experience with one of these, I actually have the version 1 model of this. I loved it. It's a lot of money, but if you're a big Commodore 64 geek, then you would love this. The good thing with the Turbo Chameleon is that it's actually got VGA on it. Now, obviously, the Commodore 64, if you're going to be using something like this with the original 64C or Breadbin doesn't have VGA in the back. So by putting this into the back of your Commodore into the expansion port, this is going to instantly allow you to connect it to a monitor and you will get a very short picture. This is always updated with firmware and it pretty much just revolves around loading stuff onto an SD card and popping it in. The only thing I wasn't too keen on with the Turbo Chameleon was if I want to connect my C64 uh, to the internet BBS, then I would need to buy the attachment, which was a dock. Now, it's a great unit, but it's very expensive, and I'm pretty sure the cheaper options, such as the SD2 IEC, would likely do the same thing. If we go back to the future was 8-bit, we've also got, which is fairly new to me, the Kung Fu flash cartridge. Now, these plug into your expansion port on your C64. They look very fancy, and if we take a look at some of the screenshots just here, this is what it's going to look like once you plug it into your C64. So by the looks of it, these are all .CR2 images. I'm not sure if this accepts D64 to dot .taps, but apparently I've read good things about this and I've seen a few reviews on YouTube and it does seem pretty good. And they also come in a range of different cases. So we've got a really nice transparent case, blue, orange, and purple. Now, finally, this one isn't as expensive as the Turbo Chameleon. This is the latest Ultimate cartridge. And you'll notice this is from the same website I showed you earlier on, Gideon's Logic. Now, the latest version is the Ultimate 2 Plus L. Now, the good thing about these is that you can actually swap over the cases. So if you was to buy one of these, say, for example, in transparent, if you got bored of that case, you can actually order a different case to house your PCB in. Now, the really good thing about these and a real selling point to me, if we just click on the one I want just here, 
these have actually got Evernet built in on the board. So if we take a look at the diagram just here, we've got Evernet port just here. We've got a couple of USB ports, a phono port, I believe. And I'm pretty sure this one is actually powered by SD. These are very good and around hundred dollars or hundred pounds cheaper than the Turbo Chameleon. The only issue with this one is that it doesn't have the VGA port. Now, staying in the realms of loading games and applications, again, if we refer to eBay, we got many different devices on eBay. So we got this Tapuino device just here, which is a digital tape deck. I've no idea about this, but they seem to be pretty popular from what I see of things. And we've also got a lot of Raspberry Pi based devices as well. If we just type in specifically into eBay C64 1541 Pi Hat, for example, we got again the SD2 IEC just here, which is also for sale on eBay. Uh, we got another design case just here, but they all roughly do the same thing. The one I'm looking for specifically is the Pi hat. So the Pi 1541 hat, a uh, stylish unique design for C64. If we just click on this one, what this is going to do is again, just plug into the back of your C64 through by what looks like the serial. And it's got its own adapter with it for power. And by the scenes, but you'll just load your images onto this device. And as you can see on the top of it, it's actually shaped into a floppy disk itself. I think these are really cute looking. Next up, we're briefly going to look at modern day joysticks or controllers for Commodore 64. So if you're as old as me, probably remember the times when a nine pin joystick would pretty much plug into any nine pin port on any computer pretty much. Uh, so if we head over to this website, this is ami64.com, you can actually buy brand new C64 joysticks here. For example, we got Suncom Slick Stick. If we just plug in this one, this one's £35, so it looks quite a robust joystick, and I'm pretty sure this is actually based on um, an original sort of 1980s joystick of that era, so it looks really nice. And yeah, if we take a look just here, date circa 1983, so this is almost a reproduction, I suppose, of the original. And we got lots more just here. For example, we got very popular quick shot joysticks. Uh, these were very popular in their day. You had flight sticks by quick shot. You had everything pretty much. Quick shot was a very good third party brand back then. And this one, for example, is going to be compatible with C64. Uh, all your 8 bit computers, Atari, MSX, Sega, and Amstrad systems. Next up, we're looking at modern games. So a lot of people was really surprised when I tell them that Commodore 64 still has games coming out. And why not? Why wouldn't they be? Back in the day, kids would program games in their bedrooms, bedroom coders. That's where the Oliver Twins came from. So today, the scene hasn't died. This is itch.io. If I just type into itch.io, C64 will have a range of different games come up just here. Some of them you have to pay for, a lot of them's free. Now, you can download your images from this website or you can go directly to modern day Commodore 64 publishing websites, such as one of my personal favorite websites and publishers, Cytronic. So, uh, Cytronic actually started its binary zone in the very early 1990s. Recently, they've said goodbye to selling physical media um, discs, that is. They're still selling cassette tapes, but in all honesty, uh, just like myself when I was publishing games through my Flimsoft label, it was very hard to get hold of floppy disks. So fair play to Ken Subsidetronic for keeping that going for as long as he did. Everything you can see just here is modern Commodore 64 games, with the exception of B52 here. B52 was actually meant to be a Codemasters release in the early 90s, but it never happened. It was coming to the end of the era, and the C64 simply wasn't profitable anymore. A lot of these games from the Cytronic website are actually available on itch.io, so you can buy these digitally like I do these days, or you can actually buy them physical. We've also got Protovision, which is a German publisher, and these have been around for a very long time now. They actually published one of my favorite shooters for use with the Super CPU, which was Metal Dust. If we go to Protovision Games here, they sell some awesome games nowadays, such as a Pick West, which came out a couple years ago. Curse Tomb, I really highly recommend. 
And again, just like Cytronic, we got a game here known as Outrage. And this one was supposed to be published years ago. I think in the late 80s, but it never happened. But anyways, it came out eventually and Protovision released it alongside Cytronic. So just like Cytronic, you can either buy these digitally or you can buy them physically. So discs. I'm not sure actually if Protovision are still selling discs, but I know for a fact they sell cartridges now, finally, I'm going to end this off. A little while ago, I was in a local shop, WH Smith, and I came across a Commodore Amiga magazine, which is Amiga Addict, and I thought to myself, is there anything C64 related? Now, this is Reset 64. You can actually subscribe to Reset 64, and they can send you the magazine through the post, or you can actually purchase the magazine digitally. Now, it's very surprising that this one isn't in WH Smith like Amiga Addict. I think it would to do really well and we've also got an absolutely free commodore 64 magazine this is commodore free if we go to the magazine section just here you can actually download these magazines in pdf text html if we just go on to one of the latest issues 96 here we go so again i was featured in one of these a good few years ago with my flimsoft label and there's some real useful information in here uh, such as where to buy new hardware from new sid chips and new pla chips and everything else pretty much so i highly recommend looking through commodore 3 and that's it for today's commodore 64 video so a lot of information in this video but it's pretty much an accumulation of bits and pieces i've been coming across over the past couple of years and i thought some of this might help someone out and i think some of this i've showed you will likely blow some people away who's not in the know to know so much is actually going on in the world of commodore 64 today i think it's just as active it's probably in the early 90s only nowadays we got older stuff over the internet and it's no longer for sale in shops so anyways if you like the video today hit notification subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content also check me out on social media i'm on facebook it's Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.